Your voice, your opinion, your community. Fact TV, free speech, protected. says I'm Paul Reese in Bellows Falls um, like you said lifelong resident 58 years family ties for over a hundred years um, there's gonna be kind of like you said some uh, big issues kind of coming up here this year I'm okay with uh, the school budgets um, the local budgets but on the issue of marijuana or cannabis or weed I, I feel it always takes uh, a hard uh, rap, and uh, I want to share my personal thoughts on different things with drugs, addiction, addiction, mental health, anxiety, post-traumatic stress, and I'm going to argue some points a little bit. As you look in front here, it all depends who you're funding with the money, all right? Big pharmacies here, if you look at all these different drugs I've had over the years, and I really laugh. I mean, some I have needed from uh, back pain medicine to anxiety to stress to blood pressure, swelling of the back. But I found over the years how to actually medicate myself, and I really don't see what the big issue is on marijuana. Uh, actually, as a youth, I actually died of alcohol poisoning. I think it was the age of 15. Drank so much alcohol that my eyes flipped up over my head, uh, foaming at the mouth. I almost died. And, you know, I never got counseling for years on different issues. And alcohol is one of the, the worst killers uh, of anyone. Um, but I'm going to share a story. As a youth growing up, I don't know if I was probably like 12 to 13 years old. And this is my first introduction even knowing marijuana. I was ringing doorbells with local friends up in my neighborhood. And a local Bellows Falls police officer from New York came up. And he says, kids, get in the cruiser. We got in the cruiser. And he says, I got more important things to worry about than coming up here worrying about doorbells. He says, where I come from, this is the truth. A Bellows Falls police officer in the cruiser says, you know, where I come from, if you want to light up a joint in my cruiser, he says, I really don't care. He says, I got more important things to worry about. And I've remembered that my whole life. And when it comes to marijuana, I actually have known police officers who have moved up the ranks that uh, smoke themselves. I know uh, officers that are retired that want to smoke it when they're done. So. Whatever your views are, I just feel like uh, it's really getting a bad rap. Over 90,000 Vermonters several years ago, uh, the statistics showed that they were smoking pot against the law. Are you going to put them all in jail? Uh, $85,000 per female inmate, $65,000 for male? It doesn't make sense. And they says, oh boy, these different towns are going to be voting on it pretty soon. Well, let me tell you. Brattleboro, Brattleboro, Jamaica, and Londonderry already voted to sell, okay? The other uh, towns that will be voting for it will be Rockingham, Putney, Vernon, and Wilmington. And you can choose to do what you want. But I'll tell you what, my 50 years of knowing marijuana uh, at 18, the best marijuana in the state used to actually come from Westminster West in Putney, no matter uh, if it was legal or not legal. But what I'm going to say, I had uh, went to the Greater Falls Connection educational um, program thing the other night, uh, and I was a little uh, perturbed, by, uh, but the thing is, I respect everything they've been saying about the youth. You have to keep marijuana 
away from the youth. Everybody would. Uh, I mean, any type of drug. Alcohol, uh, the biggest killer in this community is the heroin. I mean, it's unbelievable. You can get that for $4 a bag, and I've watched friends that I've known die from that and everything else. But on the marijuana issue, the only thing I take issue with on Greater Falls Connection is they wanted a buffer zone of one mile from the school system. The state, I think, has between 500 or maybe 1,000 feet. Now, you can go to any uh, local bar and see them promoting alcohol, and there's not a one-mile buffer zone. Uh, you have uh, pharmacies that you can pick up any type of these drugs uh, right next to the school or within one mile. So marijuana is getting a bad rap. And I would say the federal government, I personally believe, has lied to the American people for years and years and realized that they're going to have to change their policies. Some places, if you have two joints, a joint, you go to jail for a year or two. It's absolutely nuts. It depends who gets the money. Is it the state? Is it the federal government? Or whoever. You talk about addiction. How many of these scratch tickets do you see people buying? Geez, that's a big addiction in this town. But well, I guess the state looks the other way as long as they make the money. Well, what I'm going to tell you here in this little program is these type of drugs, it is known drugs can weaken your immune system. And I'm finding that out every day myself. All right, know what you need to do if you got health problems? Pick up a book. Uh, read it. See how to fix yourself. You are your best doctor. You know yourself better than anyone else. Every time you go to a doctor, they hand you more of these type of drugs. You know what? I found sometimes you change your diet. Use turmeric, maybe some hot pepper, maybe uh, some cinnamon, uh, maybe some garlic, maybe some nuts, okay? And what I'm finding out, you change your diet and it basically can fix almost every health problem you have. And I can honestly say I have not been sick in over four years, okay? Not even your common cold. So say the hell with this, say good to this, and I'm gonna show you something else interesting. I used to walk around my block probably uh, five times or two miles a day. And I would once again reflect to God. I says, why do we have weed? Why do we have pot? Why is it so terrible? I honestly believe everything God created is good for the right reason. So I was inspired once again by God to realize that weed isn't a bad thing if it's used right. So last year, I took a one little seed, okay? This is the money seed, over 90,000 Vermonters uh, have broken the law doing this. But I took one seed, I grew that seed, and it became eight feet, three inches, of a beautiful marijuana plant. And it was a learning experience, uh, experience for me, because it was the first time. So nothing with the plant that I could use until I actually tri uh, cut, uh, cut the buds in the fall. And I started smoking the weed when it dried out. All of a sudden, I began to read where I never could settle down the trauma as a kid to focus. And I could read. Both sides of my brain were working. I could read and comprehend what I read. And it was great to be able to do that. I could start writing letters without having the mind go off in space, spaces. So what I'm saying my back stress, the pain. It relaxed the muscles so I could sleep at night. It helped me with prostate issues not to have to get up all night uh, to, to run to the bathroom and urinate. It relaxed the muscles. And I'm thinking, everything I've ever heard about marijuana, I've heard bad stories. Well, I'll tell you, my friends, either the government has lied to you or the state has lied to you and I recommend marijuana to anyone. I'm learning there's 5,000 different types. I never got the munchies for mine. 
I never became crazy. I simply smoked it one bowl about a half hour before bed and it helped me to relax and go into a deep sleep. Okay? It didn't affect my driving the next day. Uh, what are you going to find people for having it in their blood system for 30 days? These drugs here will mix you up and have more side effects and said not to use when you drive. I was told by a doctor not even to use this one. It would put a hole in my stomach if I continued to use that one. One of these others I took for anxiety. I had the worst nightmares of my life. I actually screamed out loud and my son come down to see if I was okay. Marijuana has done nothing. I believe federal and state government has lied to the American people long enough. And I'm not going to go on and on about the program, uh, different things, but when it comes to edibles, I did try an edible one time, uh, the dumb way. I ate a whole chocolate chip cookie with edibles. And I'll tell you what, that messed me up. So if you're going to be selling edibles uh, in the state of Vermont, you do have to control the amount of THC uh, that's in the edible. I ate that edible and I literally was crawling on the floor. I was mixed up, confused, thought I had a stroke. And I won't lie to the youth, but that's my experience with eating a whole edible. I know many of my doctors said just eat a little bit. And in fact, all of my doctors have no problem with me uh, with marijuana. Um, I've even heard testimony from my friend, like I said, who was addicted to uh, heroin, that said as long as he has the marijuana, he's okay. It takes away that craving. Um, but if you have any type of addiction, I've lost a lot of friends with heroin. I know that you cannot help anyone with an addiction until they're willing to help themselves. Um, but I just wanted to share that with you people and you guys decide how you're going to vote and I'm going to do whatever I want to do no matter what the law is, even if it means you have to break the law around with 90,000 people. I mean, I just, I actually don't even trust the government on so many things, but that's a different issue. Um, just remember in West Brattleboro, they're going to be opening up so you can buy um, your marijuana products and different things uh, in Brattleboro. And I hope someday we could grow it, uh, be able to sell it in this area. If you go down to Massachusetts and want to buy it, um, a little container like this will cost you like $90, okay? $90. Um, but my type, I've had uh, Bud Out Green. You dry it out, grind it up a little bit, and I can just want to share with you once again that uh, I absolutely see no side effects, long-term, short-term. Uh, remember, we don't live forever. I know in Israel, they were, had uh, nursing home patients were um, smoking marijuana to help them with their appetite. I have a relative well into her 90s that smokes marijuana. I mean, it doesn't make everybody crazy. Um, it's, it, it comes right down to the money. You've got to figure out what state uh, is for, against it. Um, the different politicians uh, view everything different. But, I mean, I can tell you myself, when you talk about people who have smoked pot or haven't smoked pot, uh, when I drove an uh, oil truck for three years, I never smoked pot. I drove school bus for the Rockingham and Westminster District, never smoked pot. Worked at the high school 18 years, never smoked pot. Um, so what I'm telling you is I'm not a hypocrite, but I can tell you uh, schools, teachers, and administrators, law enforcement, they have been hypocrites to the young people because I know for a fact they've smoked it themselves. And I won't stand here and be a hypocrite to any child in this community, um, but I'm saying if any kid in this community has any issues with drug, trauma, reach out to me and I'll tell you the truth and I'll show you my friends that actually uh, have been affected by drugs and many of them have lost their lives. Um, and so like I said, Greater Falls Connections doing a good job with the youth thing, but stay with the youth. Don't try to control my uh, 
village and town policies. Um, I'm going to wrap up the show, but I just hope I got a little of the information out to you. Um, I'd be surprised if it actually passes uh, in this area because there's a lot of older type voters that view uh, marijuana and weed as something totally, totally terrible. But I really think it's going to be the, the medicine of the future and you're going to see big pharmacy finally start to sell it. Because one magazine I got said that you can actually buy THC from a pharmacy for like $1,300. My friend, save you the money, save yourself the money, get a seed from a friend, grow it. It's a weed. Uh, you water it a little bit. It's pretty easy maintenance. And yeah, you pretty much anyone can grow it. And we got expert growers in Vermont. But since Colorado, uh, went ahead and legalized it. A lot of our good growers, uh, young people in my age bracket, actually went to Colorado. So I'm hoping someday they'll bring it back. I'm hoping someday we'll be able to sell marijuana right down at the Waypoint Center to the tourists and the piece of land next to the train station. I actually would love to see it become a big ingrown marijuana facility. It creates jobs so the tourists can actually see something when they come to this town because right now I really don't think there's anything to see other than grab a cup of coffee but that's the program it's kind of short but I'm glad I got it off my chest and uh, I just wanted to uh, reach out to uh, everybody and give my perspective on what I found from marijuana and an honest viewpoint all right thank you very much